Bruchem Aboim. Tonight's lecture is uh, on a very important law, concept, and sin um, that the whole world rests on. And it's interesting, we have uh, three cardinal sins that a person is supposed to give his life for. They are Shvich Asdamim, Abod and Gili Arias, which is uh, killing someone, not to kill someone if someone tells you to kill them, uh, serving idols, and sexual improprieties. For these three things, a person is supposed to give up his life. All other commandments in the Torah, a person can violate them if someone threatens their life to do so. But these three you have to give your life up for. And yet, the sin that's even worse than all three of these is a sin called Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara is gossip. We, and we live in an age of gossip. Uh, cell phones. You see people walking around, cell phones in their ears, detached. People are talking all the time, and there's no one supposedly listening. And gossip, what's new, becomes the order of the day. Uh, you know, what, 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 what kind of gossip is going on? And it's interesting, this sin began with the creation of the world. The Nachash, the snake, spoke Lush and Hara about God. And this brought about Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, eating from the tree of knowledge, which brought death to the world. And he was punished with leprosy. This is the sin um, that the Torah dictates for someone who speaks Lush and Hara. Again, it destroys the world. This destroys families. When people talk about it, someone destroys friends, destroys marriages. And the punishment for speaking Lashon Hara in the Torah is leprosy, which is not the leprosy we think of as a physical disease, but it's really a physical manifestation of a spiritual deficiency. In fact, the cure that the Torah has, which has nothing to do with anything medical, the cure is solitary confinement that this person has caused a rift between society, between people, and his atonement is to be by himself and realize what it is when you cause people to be separated, to be solitary. And then the hope is through him being in solitary confinement, not even with another leper, so this idea of a leper colony is a physical disease. This is the spiritual disease. And the cure is, again, solitary confinement. It's uh, amazing that it's such a severe sin, transgression to man and to God, that each book of the Torah talks about it. In the first book of the Torah, we have, as I mentioned, the Nachash, the sin of the snake. But we also have the sin of Yosef, who told Lush and Hart to his father about the brothers. And the end was that he was sent to Egypt. And the reason why he was a slave for 13 years and in, uh, in prison was to, as a, an atonement for the Lush and Har, for the, the, the tale bearing he's told about his brothers. And his father, who listened, was also punished. We'll talk about that, how, how many people are affected by this, this sin of Lush and Har. The second book deals with uh, Dasan and Aviron, uh, the two that spoke Lush and Har about Moshe Rabbeinu when he killed the Egyptian. Again, Moshe had to run for his life. In fact, Pharaoh tried to kill him, and only through a miracle was he saved. The third book, Vayikra, has the laws of leprosy and the punishment that a person receives. The fourth book deals with the spies and them speaking Lush and Hara about the land, and for, because of that, the Jews were forced to wander in the desert for 40 years. And the fifth book, Devarim, talks about Miriam, and her speaking Lush and Hara about Moshe Rabbeinu. And really, just as an aside, and she was really, didn't mean to be critical in a sense, but that brought about actually uh, the sin of the spies. Because up until that time, when she spoke Lush and Hara, her Lush and Hara was that Moshe Rabbeinu divorced his wife, and she felt sorry for those who would become prophets that they would have to divorce their wives, is what Zipporah, Moshe's wife, said. And all the women of the generation who had stood behind Moshe, rock solid, all of a sudden no longer were his strongest, strongest uh, um, backers. All of a sudden they pulled away and they let their husbands do what they wanted. That's why the Miraglim, the spies, were able to complain about the land, to speak Lush and Hara. Otherwise they wouldn't have sent spies. The women would have said, why? Moshe says, time to go in, we should go into the land. And the whole thing never would have happened. 
So we see all five books. In fact, one of the remembrances we say every day is this thing about Lush and Hara that Miriam spoke. So Lush and Hara is that which destroys the world. In fact, there was a rabbi, a great rabbi, who was able to walk through a cemetery and see why people died. And he was able to go from one grave to another, and he said 95% of the people that are here are here because of Lush and Hara. And it's an interesting thing. It, it says that al tiftach pel satan this is a statement that we say in Hebrew, which says, don't open your mouth to Satan. Which is strange. I mean, after all, Satan, so if we don't talk, then he can't hear and he, nothing is going to happen, really. Satan, who's so cunning, who's able to trip us up all over the place, if we don't say anything. So according to Kabbalah, what we understand is that the Sutton is blind and deaf. Yet he's filled with eyes because it comes from the fact that we think nobody's watching. So he takes the eyes that we think that we're blinded, nobody sees, and he gets them. So he's covered with eyes. But still, when we do a sin, what happens is that Satan is able to take the energy of that action that we do and use that action. But even though he has the power of action from the negative act that we do, he has no mouth, so he can't accuse us. It's an interesting phenomenon. This world is a reflection of the world above. Uh, if you look at the sky, what color is the sky? Blue. The ocean, what color is the ocean? Blue. And yet, if you look at air, it's really colorless. If you put water from the ocean into a glass, it's colorless. So where's the blue? And the blue, I'm sure science has their, their reasons for it. But we believe, according to Kabbalah, that underneath the throne of glory, God has a sapphire brick. And that sapphire reflects onto the sky, which reflects onto the water. And that's where the blue comes from. So everything in this world is a reflection of the world above. And the laws that we have here are also the same laws they have in heaven. I owned restaurants, and I had a young lady who stole from me. And I had her on tape, video, taking an envelope with $200 and putting it in her pocket. And I called the police department, and I wanted to press charges. And I said I had a video, and they took the video, and they said to me, we're not going to do anything with it. However, if she gets pulled over for a traffic violation or any other in incident that brings her to court, we will prosecu prosecute her for this at the same time. But we're not going to go get her. Which is exactly what they do in heaven. You can sin, 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 but unless your records are pulled and you're brought before the court, unless someone accuses you, unless Satan can accuse you, you can keep sinning and heaven will wait and give you a chance to do tshuva to repent, which is different than earth because you can't repent here. But it will stay in abeyance waiting until your records are, are pulled. What allows your records to be pulled? When you speak Lush and Hara, because that sin is not just action, it has verbal communication. So when you use your mouth in a negative way by speaking gossip about someone else, now all of a sudden Satan has that power, not of just action, but of accusing you. The ability to speak. That's why I say, I'll tiftak bel the sutton. Don't open your mouth to the sutton. Don't give him the power of speech. Because if you don't give him the power of speech, you have time to hopefully repent for your sins. So the sin of Lush and Hara, and who's affected? The person who speaks Lush and Hara? Yosef. The person who listens to Lush and Hara is even worse. Yaakov. And even the person whose Lush and Hara is spoken about, all three of them, when someone speaks Lush and Hara, the court pulls their files. And all of a sudden, they are looked at to see whether there is something that they can be prosecuted for. So what Lush and Hara does is it destroys all three. And up until then, you can sin, 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 just like my cashier. If she never got a traffic violation, never got pulled over, never went to court, which seemed never to happen, because I never ha was ever called, she wasn't prosecuted. And so too in heaven. The, it's interesting, it says in Mishle, in Proverbs, 
Hamavis v'achayim biyad haloshim. That death and life are in the hands of the tongue. And it's interesting. You would think it would say life and death, but it talks about death and life. Because through a person's mouth, we are called a medabir, one who speaks. What differentiates us from all of life is the ability to be able to speak, to be able to communicate. It's interesting, the uh, Rashbi, Rashim Bayachoy, the author of the Zohar of Kabbalah, said it's interesting that a person has two ears, two eyes, two nostrils. He should have had two mouths. One for the mundane and one for the spiritual. And right after saying that, he quickly corrected himself and said, if a person had two mouths, he would use them both for the mundane. Better a person has only one. And what do we see? That God took that ability to speak and put it behind two gates. Your teeth, a hard gate, and your lips, a soft gate. Try to protect a person so the person will not use his ability, his gift of speech in a negative way. The, the Gemara talks about Rebbe Gamliel, who was a great sage, who had a very wise servant whose name was Tuvia, Tuvi. And he sent Tuvi to the market. And he's with instructions. He said, Tuvi, go to the market and bring me back the worst thing in the market. And Tuvi came back with a tongue. And then after that, Rabbi Gamliel told Tuvi, now go to the marketplace. Bring me back the best thing in the market. And Tuvi came back with the tongue. Because it's both ends. It is the greatest gift we have. The ability to be able to speak. The ability we, that we have to be able to communicate. The ability with our mouths. We can make someone who feels bad. Feel better. With our mouths we can make someone who feels insecure. Feel powerful. And, 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 and inspired. With our mouths. We can destroy someone and make them feel nothing. With our mouths, we take people up and we bring people down. We have that just with words. It's interesting. I've worked out with a trainer. And the trainer will say, great job, Marty. <laughs> it means nothing. But it makes you feel better. <laughs> it makes you want to work out a little harder. It makes you want to push. And you, you really think he's not even telling you the truth, but it doesn't make any difference. You know, if, if you meet someone and you say, have you lost weight? The person loves you. You don't think the person lost weight. You're just, you're looking good. People just stand, everything. You have that ability to turn that switch on, on a person to make them feel better. I mean, go up to a woman and say, are you pregnant? <laughs> and she's not you've destroyed her whole life I mean you know wh why would you say something like that so all I'm saying is we have that ability with our mouth God gave us a gift and Lush and Hara destroys that gift and with it the whole world that we have and especially today again with cell phones you, you, see, you see a woman walking down the street She's got a dog on a leash on one hand. She's pushing a stroller. And she's got a cell phone at the same time talking as she's going down the road. What's she talking about? People talk. They gossip. The inquirer. I mean, people want to know what's going on in other people. What's Facebook? I'm amazed. People put their whole life. And they're talking. What are they talking about? Other people. That's what they're conversing about. What's happening with this person? What's happening with that person? What we all should do is concentrate on ourselves trying to be the best people that we can. If you have nothing good to say about someone, don't say anything. But the truth is you need to be careful. Because even when you say something good, that too can be Lush and Hara. I found out the hard way. There was a dear friend that I had. And I said something to someone about him, about how good he was. Him? Him? You think he's good? And he went off on a tirade. I was amazed. And one of the prayers I say every day, I don't want to hear anybody think, say anything bad about God. Because even about God, you can speak Lush and Hara. Who says you have the right to talk badly about God? Do you really understand anything about what God does? To think we have the audacity to judge God. 
We're so worried about God judging us, yet we judge him every moment of our lives. So I don't even want to hear that. And we should try to be careful, not to speak badly about anyone, not to use people's names. Talk about things and not people. It's not our concern. And with that, we make the world a better place. And with that, we, our record stays in the, in, the, in the file cabinet. And God gives us a chance to do tshuva, to repent, and hope to become better people. God bless, and thank you very much for coming. Watch what you say.